So if you're following the ketogenic diet and you are testing ketones and you're having challenges with getting those ketones up into a therapeutic range, into a fat burning range, we're going to be discussing number one, how do you even test for ketones? The three primary methods to test. I'm going to share the worst ways to test, the best ways to test, the optimal ranges, and then I'm going to get into five scientifically proven methods to enhance ketone production in your body. Um, this is going to make a lot of sense for those of you who are either brand new to keto or have been doing keto for quite some time. So let's get right. Okay. The first thing I want you to consider, well, first of all, let me share the slides here. Here we go. We're going to be discussing what ketones do in the body, first of all. So when we think about ketones, ketones are a byproduct of fat burning. And many of you who do keto, you want to burn fat. You want to feel good. Ketones have a whole host of benefits, including raising your basal metabolic rate so you burn more calories, enhancing something called mitogenesis, which is the creation of new mitochondria, and you produce more energy and you feel good. And there are so many studies on keto, but here's the thing. A lot of people who do it, they struggle to get those ketones up, and there are five ways to overcome that. First, let's talk about why we don't want to chase ketones. Now, this video is all about how to get ketones up. I understand that. But the goal is not to have as high amount of ketones as possible. The goal is have an op to have an optimal range. And I'll go over that optimal range for you. But I want you to understand, we don't chase ketones. We chase results. Just like you wouldn't want a high amount of glucose in your body, you don't necessarily want a high amount of ketones. There's a sweet spot you want to fall into. And I've taken thousands of students through my Keto Camp Academy and I have come up with the formula with where I would think you should be, where I think you should be to feel good and burn fat and get results. But when we get it, when we talk about ketones, the question is always asked, how do we measure ketones? There are three primary ways to measure ketones because there are three ketone bodies. When you drop insulin in your body by lowering your carbohydrate intake and increasing your dietary fat and protein intake, you're going to drop insulin, and then your body is going to now have access to your fat stores. You're going to start burning fat for fuel, and we really need to do that. 90% plus of Americans are in a keto deficiency. So when you start burning your fat for energy, those fatty acids in your fat are sent to your liver, and your liver then starts producing ketones. And the liver produces three ketone bodies. You have acetone, acetoacetate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. So since there are three ketone bodies, there are essentially three ways to test ketones. You have finger prick machines, like a Keto Mojo, for example, that's testing blood glucose, and that's looking at beta-hydroxybutyrate. Then you have urine strips looking at acetoacetate, and then you have breath machines looking at acetone. So let's talk about the methods here that I don't like. The one that I don't recommend is urine strips. And I know this might be uh, kind of bad news to a lot of you because urine strips are, are super cheap. They're the most affordable way to test ketones. But here's the thing. When your body and your cells are becoming really efficient at using ketones, which is the goal, by the way, those ketones are not going to necessarily spill out in the urine. The acetoacetate, it's not going to show up in the urine, giving you a false negative, showing you that you might not be in ketosis, but you might very well be in ketosis. Your body's just using those ketones very well, which is the goal. So I'm not a fan of urine strips, maybe in the first couple of days, but once your body is getting familiar with ketones, it's not going to be a great option. Now, breath meters over the years, I always say have been hit or miss. They have been some that are good, some that are bad. Uh, the one that I do like is from Biosense. They uh, measure acetone in the breath and give you an ACE score. And you could correlate that to blood meters and get a good idea if you're in ketosis or not, if you're burning fat or not. So if you want to get a Biosense machine, if you're watching on YouTube, we put a link down below with the coupon code for you to get Biosense. But the gold standard for testing ketones is going to be blood. And what we use in our side of our Keto Camp Academy is a Keto Mojo. The cool thing about a Keto Mojo is that it gives you both blood glucose and blood ketones. It's a finger prick. You do it at home. You get a result right away. And we also included a link for Keto Mojo. It's ketocampmachine.com with KetoCamp at checkout. So now that we understand the best way to test ketones is with blood, looking at beta-hydroxybutyrate, what are the optimal ranges to stay in? Remember what we just said. We don't chase ketones. We chase results. But there is a sweet spot we want to hit. 
that shows you're burning fat and you're getting the benefits we want to get from ketones. So the optimal glucose, blood glucose, and optimal blood ketone ranges that you want to aim to hit are going to be for fasting glucose is 70 to 90 milligrams per deciliters. When we think about the human body, there's a couple gallons of blood in the body. And what's considered an optimal thriving state, a healthy aging state inside of the body is one teaspoon of sugar in the entire bloodstream, which is about 85, 80 to 85 milligrams per deciliter. So if, you if you're testing your blood glucose in a fasted state, we want to see that between 70 and 90. Now, if you're checking your blood ketones and you show 0.5 or higher on your keto mojo, that does show you are in ketosis. That verifies it. However, there is a sweet spot for you to really maximize the results on keto, and that's going to be 0.8 to 2.8 millimoles per liter, which is the keto mojo measurement, the ketone measurement. So you want to be around that 0.8 to 2.8. We also recommend our coaches in the academy looking at something called postprandial glucose. Postprandial glucose is, that means after eating, your glucose response after a meal. And this is some advanced testing, but I wanted to give you the option here to, te to test this and check this for yourself. One hour after eating, your ketones should be in that same range, 0.8 to 2.8. And then your blood glucose should be under 120 milligrams per deciliters. We, we don't want it above that an hour after eating. And then we could test two hours after eating, which I think it's a great idea to do that. We want those ketones to be in the same range, 0.8 to 2.8, and then the blood glucose to drop below 100. That would be, if you're hitting everything you see on the screen here, you're doing it right, and you're getting the results that we want you to get. But if you're not hitting everything here, that's what today's video is for. We're going to talk about five ways to immediately boost ketone boost ketones on a ketogenic diet. Now, I've worded it ketogenic diet, but I want to be clear, it's not necessarily a diet. It's a metabolic process. So the first way is going to be taking one to two tablespoons of the MCT oil or MCT powder, the MCT fat, caprylic acid, also called C8. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the benefits of an, a medium chain fat. But when, we, when there's different types of, of medium chains, there's C6, C6, uh, 8, C10, C12, they all have different benefits, but the one that has the most studies on it in regards to enhancing ketone production is caprylic acid, C8. And you can see here, I'm showing you three studies, but the one that I took a screenshot here on the screen uh, shows that tricaprylin alone, so caprylic acid, C8, increases plasma ketone response more than coconut oil or any other medium chain triglycerides. And so you want to have about one to two tablespoons, but I would recommend if you've never had MCT oil before, start with one teaspoon, start very low, and then build your way up because it could cause some stomach issues. The second tip is to have 16 ounces of coffee in the morning, 90 minutes after waking up. Okay, I'm going to show you some studies on why that is going to help, but why do I say 90 minutes after waking up? Well, here's why. When you wake up first thing in the morning, you're going to have higher cortisol levels. This is natural. This is part of your circadian rhythm. When the sun comes up, your body activates the sympathetic tone as a way to give you energy to start your day. This is going to happen for every person who has a healthy circadian rhythm, or uh, not even a healthy circadian rhythm. Anybody who has a circadian rhythm, this is going to happen with the sun. So what happens is cortisol is going to be highest in the morning, right, when you wake up. And cortisol is way more powerful than caffeine. So if you're having your caffeine from coffee or tea first thing in the morning, that caffeine is pretty much rendered useless. What's going to happen is you're not going to experience the benefits of that caffeine, and you're going to find yourself reaching for more cups of coffee later in the day. But when you wait 90 minutes after you wake up, that's an hour and a half, cortisol will, will begin to naturally peak down or decline. And when that happens, and then you have your cup of coffee, then you maximize the benefits of that caffeine. And when it comes to ketone productions from caffeine, this study showed that caffeine stimulated key, key, ketone production. Uh, the title is called Caffeine Intake Increases, Increases Plasma Ketones. And it showed this study aimed to evaluate the acute ketogenic effect of two doses of caffeine in 10 healthy adults Caffeine given at breakfast 
significantly stimulated ketone production in a dose dependent manner and also raised plasma free fatty acids. So the first two tips go together. You're going to have a cup of coffee 90 minutes after you wake up and you're going to incorporate the MCT fat in your coffee. You know, get the two birds with one stone there. That will get ketones up. The third tip is going to be swap out cow dairy, especially pasteurized cow dairy for sheep and goat dairy. Here's why. This is an interesting study. Most people, and I say most people, this study shows that 75% of the world's population loses its ability at some point to process lactose from cow dairy into adulthood. Let me rephrase this. 75% of the adult population cannot break down cow dairy properly, creating some sort of inflammatory response. So that alone in itself is enough for you to be like, okay, maybe I should consume less pasteurized cow dairy. But sheep and goat dairy don't have that issue. Sheep and goat dairy actually contain about 30% medium chain triglycerides. You can see this study here. Goat milk can be considered a functional food. Spanish researchers find the essential difference between the composition of cow and goat milk stems from the nature of their fat content. It is not only the size of the goat milk's blood cells, but rather the profile of its fatty acids. Goat milk contains more essential fatty acids than cow milk. Both belong to the omega-6 series. Similarly, goat milk has 30 to 35% medium chain fatty acids, while cow milk has 15 to 20%. These fatty acids are a quick source of energy and are not stored as body fat. In addition, goat milk Goat milk's fat reduces total cholesterol levels and maintains adequate levels of triglycerides and GOT and GPT. This makes it a food choice for the prevention of heart diseases. Now, the significance of medium chain fats is that these are fats that have the ability to bypass digestion. Your liver doesn't have to pump out bile to break down protein. You don't have to start, you don't have to produce all these stomach enzymes. It goes right into the mitochondria, it goes right into your cells, and it's very efficient for telling your mitochondria to use ketones and helping your body raise ketones inside of your body. So swap out cow dairy with goat and sheep dairy, and that alone should bump up ketone production. The fourth tip is going to be a supplement called L-carnitine. L-carnitine you could get from food, but you also, to get the effect for ketone production, you, you probably want to supplement with it. And what we do is about 800 milligrams sometimes up to 1,600 milligrams per day to get this ketone response. You want to think of L-carnitine as a bus that shuttles fatty acids to your mitochondria. And we've seen it work like a charm to get ketones up in the body. It is a, a really efficient delivery mechanism for fatty acids to go right into the mitochondria. And that's where you're going to feel good. That's where you're going to produce more energy and also burn more fat. So think of L-carnitine as that bus that shuttles fatty acids to the mitochondria. And this study showed that in L-carnitine supplemented, in the L-carnitine supplemented group, plasma insulin levels and HOMA IR levels significantly decreased when compared to baseline values. Conclusions, considering the role of caloric restriction and increasing the intestinal uptake of carnitine, the results suggest that oral L-carnitine administration, when associated with a hypocaloric feeding regimen, improves insulin resistance and may represent an adjunctive treatment for uh, type 2 diabetes. Pretty cool. Uh, and by the way, I put down in the notes my favorite coffee and coupon code with them and the L-carnitine supplement that I take. Everything that you were talking about, you can find references down below in the YouTube video. That's the fourth tip. The fifth tip is exogenous ketones, question mark. Now, there's a time and place for exogenous ketones. I, I don't believe in just taking exogenous ketones and artificially raising ketones and testing and saying I'm in ketosis without doing the work. The most important thing is to do the work, to get your body producing ketones endogenously from within. But there is a time and place for the right quality exogenous ketone supplement. And we use that sometimes to prime the pump. We use that to help the person feeling good as they're still getting fat adapted. So there is a time and place for it. I just wouldn't rely on it. And I would make sure you do the work 
And then maybe this could supplement you doing the work until you're actually producing it endogenously. I use two companies. The two brands that I use for exogenous ketones is Ketone IQ from HV, HVMN and Kinetic um, as well. They have two good products that, that uh, do a really good job. And we drop links and coupon codes for you in the YouTube notes down below. The, 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 those are the five tips, but there's a bonus tip here. Intermittent fasting and fasting strategies also is a great way to enhance ketone productions because during a fast, your body's going to be forced to find energy and it's going to switch over to fat, hopefully. And as you mobilize more fat, ketones should show on your ketone reading. So you can incorporate fasting, but I wouldn't be too aggressive with it if you're struggling to produce ketones because it might not feel that great. But definitely start with a 12-hour fast. And that could be as easy as finishing your last meal at 7 p.m., going to bed, and then waiting until 7 a.m. for your first meal. That's a good 12-hour fast and then working from there. But intermittent fasting strategies are a fantastic way to get ketones up. And then the more metabolically flexible you are, the more aggressive you could become with your fasting schedule. Let's say you're doing everything that I'm teaching you here and you're still frustrated. You're still not producing the ketones. You're still not feeling the way that you want to feel. You hear about all these people doing keto and feeling great, but you're not feeling those results. Are you broken? Is there something wrong with you? No, nobody's broken. There's nothing wrong with you. This is where I would revisit the fundamentals. We teach this to our students all the time. You hit a stall, you're frustrated with your results. Let's revisit the fundamentals of your health, sleep, stress, and movement. Okay, let's talk about sleep real quick. If you're not getting quality sleep, you're going to wake up with higher levels of cortisol the next day. Glucose follows cortisol and ketones drop. They have an inverted relationship. So make sure you're focusing and emphasizing sleep, quality sleep. And then stress. Mental stress will create a cortisol response, will create a glucose response and lower ketones. So master your stress. We talk about that. We have a section in the Keto Camp Academy called the mental six pack. Build that mental six pack. And then movement. That could be working out. That could be an exercise or that could just be going for a long walk on an empty stomach. That should bump up ketones as well. So those are the five methods. We put notes and references in the YouTube notes down below for the products and everything we spoke about as well. Ketosis is an incredible process and I want you to get the benefits and these methods are going to help you harness that innate intelligence so we could remind that innate intelligence to use this metabolic pathway we call ketosis. So I'm going to open it up now for some question and answer. I hope that video, this, this section was already helpful so far. Perfect Keto, Sarita is a good brand. I see your uh, question here. Yep. I like perfect keto. They make some good products. They make an MCT oil. I think they also make a exogenous ketone as well. Let me check um, some of the comments here on YouTube. Okay. I see a few coming on here. Yay for mitogenesis. Hey, and thank you so much. I needed this. I'm struggling. Teresa, you got this. I'm so glad this was beneficial. Maggie says, how do I measure ketones? We spoke about that. Uh, keto mojo is the one we use. Uh, always so great information. Thank you, Brittany. Will ketone levels in blood be the same for type 1 diabetics? No, it'll be different. You want to really be strategic and, and disciplined and, and testing those markers if you're type 1 diabetic. We've had, we've had students in our Keto Camp Academy who are type 1 diabetic, and they do ketone fasting, but they're closely monitoring their glucose and ketone numbers. You can still hit those optimal ranges. You have to just test more often because of, of course, obviously, type 1 diabetes. It's a specific condition. Acetyl L-carnitine and L-carnitine, they're both fine. Uh, I tend to go with acetyl, acetyl L-carnitine from Designs from Health. That's the one that I referenced in the YouTube notes, Melissa. What if you wake up at four in the morning, still wait 90 minutes? I would still wait 90 minutes because they're still, even though the sun's not up, there's still going to be a cortisol response when you get blue light and wake up and start moving. Good question. Jim, uh, I've been recently diagnosed with heart failure and have you structured a keto diet around congestive heart failure. I have not done that. And I'm not an expert on congestive heart failure, Jim, but I will say to go check out Dr. Stephen Hussey. I've interviewed him on my keto camp podcast. He has a great book called understanding the heart. And I've also seen some studies that show ketone bodies can be protective towards the cardiovascular system. Again, I'm not a congestive heart failure expert. Um, but Dr. Stephen Hussey is a friend of mine and a colleague 
I brought him on the Keto Camp podcast. He has a really great book called Understanding the Heart. He's also a big fan of ketosis as well. So I would uh, recommend his work. Go check out his book as well. Go follow him on social media. He's uh, fantastic. You could swap green tea for coffee. Uh, some people get nauseous with green tea and an empty stomach. It's uh, I heard that from a lot of my students. Some don't. I, I'm, I don't get nauseous personally, but some do. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, it's really the caffeine you want to get the benefits of when it comes to the ketones. I'm just more of a fan of coffee myself. And keep in mind, when it comes to coffee, uh, I'm talking about clean, organic coffee that has been tested for mycotoxins and heavy metals. I'm not talking about Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the, coffee is one of the highest sprayed crops in the world, up there with corn, wheat, and soy. When I say sprayed, I mean with glyphosate, with toxins, with pesticides. So get a clean coffee source. We use Purity Coffee which our, our affiliate link with them is ketocampcoffee.com and the coupon code is ketocamp. I think MCT or I, uh, Sebastian says, MCT on the start of a 16-hour fast, is it on a day? I'm not sure what the question is. Can you rephrase it? MCT oil, I would recommend with your coffee or caffeine in the morning, but you can have it any, anytime during the fast. Just go low and slow with MCT oil. Some people could get an un, uh, upset stomach. Joanne, good to see you on here. Um, Monica, good to see you on here. Anne and Brenda, hello. I'm down again, says Joanne. Maybe 20 pounds gained back from overeating baked keto desserts. Worked with Coach John and down eight pounds again. Awesome. I'm glad uh, Coach John is helping you out, Joanne. He is fantastic. Good job. Yeah, those keto, those, uh, keto baked goods could add up. Paul, thanks for the badge on Instagram, my friend. I appreciate that, dude. Like the, I like the hat you're wearing in that photo too. I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Uh, awesome. I was wondering how I chose this brand. <laughs> Got it. Uh, that was me with zero energy earlier this year. What is helping is finally more sunshine and warmth and still crap and, sh and st still sleep crap and stress, but feeling better. I'm glad you're feeling better. And yes, Beverly, the coach is rocket to see you on here. The only time I can get my ketones up at one, says Melissa, or above is to fast. No matter what I eat, I will stay between 0.3 and 0.8. I've been doing this quite for a while. Started the 511 plan last week. I also got really high glucose numbers when I did add in carbs. No help from my nutritionist or doctor as to why. Do you know? Yeah, let's talk about that. So it is important to consider that the longer you do keto, the less ketones you're going to see when you test. And that's a good thing. When you're really keto adapted, you're not going to get a whole bunch of ketones being produced, or I should say, you're not going to see that when you test unless you do a longer fast. So if you've been doing it for a while, consider that. And if you're doing a keto flex day, like you just mentioned, Melissa, I love the 511 rule. And you you did some carbs in it and it really gave you a big spike. Change the carbs around. Uh, try having a different source of carbs and see which carbs are giving you a better response. That will make a big difference to just test and verify which carbs are better for you. And you also want to lower your fat on your high carb days as well. Will a, will a little creamer, a little creamer break a fast? It depends on the creamer. If it's heavy cream, should not break a fast. If it's a creamer with like carbs and sugar, then it will break a fast. So it depends on the specific creamer. Big difference between regular coffee and organic, 100% worth the switch. Yeah, Brittany, good to see you on here. 100% worth the switch. I agree with you. Absolutely. It's good to know. Wonder why my one was down. Yeah, Beverly, exactly. The longer you do it, the less ketones you'll see. And, and that's a good thing. You know, unless you do a longer fast, like for myself, I'm going to see 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 in like 18, 20 hours into a fast. But if I go a little bit longer, then I'll see it raise a bit. But I've been doing this for a while. You have too. So the longer you do it, uh, that means you're more keto adapted. It means your mitochondria are sucking those ketones. They're using those ketones. And that is a good thing. I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Keep them rolling. Keep them coming. Let me know where you're watching from as well. I'm in beautiful Miami, Florida, where it's a fantastic day. It might rain later. The Miami Heat lost last night, but they're still up 3-1 in the series. Hopefully, they end it tomorrow night in Boston. Go Heat. They're going to win it all this year. At least that's the goal. Mississippi in the house. Hello. 
Fat does not necessarily break a fast because there's no glucose in an insulin response, but you do have to burn that fat in the dietary fat before body fat. So keep that in mind. And um, it can start the, the digestive process. I see Australia in the house. Pretty cool. Denmark. Hello, Bridget or Bridget. Buffalo, New York. Hello, Denise, Melissa in Mississippi. We're going to call you Melissa or Mississippi Melissa. Um, I love that we have people from all across the world. Thanks for joining. I see Julie. Good to see you from Texas. Uh, Maggie Robles says, I did keto for almost four years and lost 40 pounds. I started eating carbs and gained back almost 30 pounds. Now I'm doing carnivore, but there's no results. Instead, I'm gaining weight. Please help. Maggie, we'd love to help you with that. There's a right way to do it. It sounds like you did keto too aggressively, and we would want to ease you into the right flex approach. But also keep in mind, it's not about the weight gain or the weight loss. Those are just symptoms. So um, we'd love to coach you on that. That'll get, We would have to learn more about your health history, your goals, and see if you've been testing any labs and then give you a game plan. But the right keto flex approach, it's not just about eating more carbs and then uh, you know, forgetting about ketosis. It's about strategically having those carbs at the right time. And we teach that to our Keto Camp Academy students. So Maggie, if you want us to teach that to you, head over to our uh, ketocampacademy.com and you can learn more about our, our coaching program. I see Holland in the house. Uh, what do I think of a seven-day fast? I love a five-day fast. Personally, I've done that. But you want to make sure you check your glucose and ketones throughout and you break it the right way. I have a video on my YouTube channel on how to break that block fast, but there's a lot of deep autophagy healing with a long fast like that. Teresa, I already answered the question uh, earlier. I said uh, not; it won't be the same because of the specific conditions with type 1 diabetes. Thank you, Holland, Success Valley. I appreciate the kind words. Holland in the house, super cool. Cape Coral in the house. I see some fellow Floridians. Monica's watching on her treadmill at the gym. I love that way to um, be productive uh, with your exercise and your education at the same time. All right. Hey, I hope this is beneficial. Share it with a friend. Go listen to the Keto Camp podcast. We have a ton of episodes. We're about to hit episode 600. We have um, new videos coming out on the YouTube channel every single day as shorts and then long form content as well. It's Keto Camp on YouTube. If you want to watch the replay of this, that can be found on YouTube, youtube.com slash Keto Camp. Uh, Alina, thanks for your help. Coach Becky, thanks for your help. I hope you all have an incredible day. I love and appreciate you all. Every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live with you. So I'll see you again a week from today. All right, everybody. Go get your ketones.